So I think if you look into next year, clearly the big question is, can the Fed get inflation down? And if it can, how much pain are we going to see? If you look at markets, for me, break-evens are suggesting they're going to succeed in getting inflation down. The yield curve suggests they could be cutting rates in roughly a year's time. And equity markets look like the hit to growth isn't going to be that severe, pricing not too much of a recession. That's all possible. But for me, that's definitely the Goldilocks case. And there's risks, frankly, both sides. There's the risk of persistent inflation. The Fed keeps telling us pretty overtly, higher for longer. They think they're going to have to do more than the market is reading. And there's equally clearly the risk of a more severe recession, which we've seen previously to get inflation down. So I think the risk reward is pretty difficult in markets right now. They're priced for optimism. I think people should be relatively cautious. Uh, this is going to be a very critical week, obviously, for, for not only the decisions that we get, but also getting a sense of the tone. Mm. Coming out of the, the Brick, Brookings um, Institute presentation from Jay Powell, the markets actually felt uh, a little more comforted, it seemed to me, because they thought he was saying, that's it, we've done most of the hard work now. We're probably going to we're probably going to deliver at a slower pace mm. and probably with not as as big moves and then we had the ppi data yep. do you think that nullifies some of the commentary we got from jay powell given that it was a much punchier number than the market mm. was expecting so i think frankly if you look back at most of 22 the market's constantly been trying to call a turn in the fed that's mostly been a bad trade to take on. I think if you just listened to them and believed them, you would have kept yourself much safer through most of the year. And we're definitely at a point now where they're always looking for the dovish comment in there, and they're always discarding some of the more hawkish comments as well. Even the speech that people focused on, the sort of dovish point around what might happen at the, the recent uh, or the upcoming decision, mm. there's plenty of hawkish commentary in there as well. So. Again, I would be pretty cautious about trying to focus always on the optimistic case. They tell you they're going to be data dependent. They tell you they have to get inflation down. They tell you it's going to be higher for longer. I still think it's important to listen to them. Steve, come on in. Uh, Mark, very good morning to you. No one should know better than the hedge funds of where the next problem is going to be. That's what my hedge funds tell me anyway. Is there a problem? in the plumbing somewhere that everyone's not looking at. Everyone's focused on the bigger picture stuff, whether it's COVID, the war, energy prices, inflation, um, interest rates. But, but is that problem somewhere else in the plumbing of these markets, whether it's in CFOs, whether it's in the swaps market, whether it's in uh, something else that we're not considering enough at the moment? So you, I think you've always got to worry about dislocations in particular markets. Obviously, the, the guilt crisis in the UK is an example of that. But I, we're not worried particularly about the plumbing of the system today. There's been a huge amount of work over the last 10 plus years to, to make things more robust. Having said that, there's always some market somewhere where there's an issue. Risk management around those moments is key. Uh, just back to the comment at, at the top of the, um, the interview, I think that move back towards some more liquid assets, that's what gives you protection in those sort of riskier moments, that ability to move portfolios around. I think you're going to see investors start to tilt back towards that, particularly as the reminder of the benefits of it that we've seen in 22.